Hi folks, in this video we're going to be looking at making contact sheets. Now contact sheets before digital was the only way photographers could see their images and make decisions on which one was the best, uh, composition, exposure, all that kind of stuff. Now, not so important because we can see them on the back of the camera, we can see them on the screen, we don't have to print them out, we can put them straight to Photoshop, but still for photography students, whether you're at school or college, they're an excellent way to evidence your decision making, uh, whether you've got it right, uh, it shows your tutor, um, everything like your compositional skill, what decisions did you make, so they're a really good way to evidence your work and they tell a uh, tutor a lot of things. I love them, I love using them, so we're going to show you how to make them in Photoshop and I'm also going to show you how potentially you could use them and mark them up. Right, so contact sheets in Photoshop. Actually, to produce contact sheet in Photoshop is really easy. It's all automated. You just really need to tell Photoshop where the images are. So let's get to it. First thing you need to do is click on File, and then you've got two options. You've got Automate and Scripts. These are um, options that Photoshop will do automatically or run for you. And Contact Sheets is found in Automate under contact sheet 2. So if you click on that you'll get this dialog box and this is basically just telling Photoshop which files you want, uh, what size of document you want and how you want them placed on the document. So first things first let's choose our images. So my dialog box there is set to files it may also be set to folder. If you've already put your images in a folder folder might be the easiest one for you. Um, actually I'm going to keep it on files and I'm just going to select a few out of a folder. So to do that you click browse and then you need to find where your images are. So mine is still on the SD card and they're in this folder and here they are. Here's the images I want and there's a few at the end that I don't want. So what I'm going to do is select the first image and then hold shift on your keyboard and select the last image you want. There you go. If they're all in a row, that's the easiest thing. If they're not all in a row, then just select the first one, hold control and click along the ones that you want. But fortunately, I want them all in the line, so I'm going to hold shift and click. Click OK. Now what that's going to do is it's going to put all the image files into this little box. You can check, you can add some more if you want to, uh, but that's all good. Now we come down to the document. I've already set it to A4, so the units are centimetres. You can choose inches or pixels, but I'm going to leave it on centimetres. A4 size is 21 centimetres by 29.7. You can lower the resolution. I'm going to leave it at 300 because that's a photographic reproduction. And then I'm going to leave everything else in that box as default. Um, thumbnails, again, I'm going to leave it as default. However, if you've got less than 30, that's 5 times 6, then you can change those rows and columns. So say if you only had 20, you could put in 4, 5 times 4 is 20, or have 4 columns, 5 rows, that type of thing. But I'm just going to leave it as default for a second. The other thing you need to check is rotate for best fit. Now if you click that, it will turn all of your images portrait, whether they were shot in landscape or portrait. They will all appear the same way. So that might mean when you're looking at your contact sheet, you might have to rotate your head. Um, however, that will reduce the amount of pages that you have. What I'm going to do, though, for this is leave that unchecked so that my landscape images will appear landscape and my portrait will appear portrait. Uh, I'm going to use a file name as caption. Leave that option checked, and that's just going to put your file name on there. That's handy because when you look at your contact sheet, you'll know which image it is that you want to use. So once that's done, just click OK. Then depending on how many images you've got or how big they are, you may be able to go and make a cup of tea. Um, I'm just going to sit here and see how long this takes. And if it takes a while, I'm going to forward it on. Depending on how big your images are, this could be really quick or it could take a while and you could go and make a cup of tea. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit here, see how long it takes, and I will speed up the film, and I will see you in a second. Right, here we are. We've got uh, page two of two here, and we've got page one of two. So uh, what it's done is it couldn't fit all my images onto one page um, at the settings that I set. So now if we go across, we've got two pages. Now, if you even have hundreds of images, Photoshop will split it across as many pages as you need. And that's basically it. The only thing that's left to do is to go to File and Save As and then you save them as JPEGs and it will flatten them and you can save that as normal. Now for those of you that are studying um, photography at level 2, level 3 or above, it might be a good idea to uh, mark up your contact sheets to let your tutor know which ones you're looking at, um, see your decision making, things like that. So what I'm going to do is just show you a couple of things that you can do while still in Photoshop to mark up your contact sheet. Right, so it's compressed all the images into one layer, so all you need to do is mark on your sheet which ones you think are successful. Not necessarily the bad ones or the ones that didn't quite make it, just really mark up the ones that are the best ones, the ones that you're going to use. So to do that, I'll put on a new layer and then use a paintbrush and you can do one of two things. Oh, I'm just going to change that to a hard round brush. You can freehand by selecting. So if we use a rag rating system, green is good. So I'm going to use some green and you can just grab your mouse and draw on that first layer. The reason why we're drawing on that first layer is if we make a mistake we're not ruining the contact sheet. Um, or if you're not very good with freehand, like that, and you're going to make a mistake, always press Control Z. But what you can do as well if you just click once with the brush, hold shift and click again, it will draw a straight line between those two clicks. So what you can actually do is draw quite a neat box he says, um, around your images. Now don't forget you can just mark the ones that are successful. Okay. The other thing you can do, once you've shown that they're successful, you might want to then um, as photographers used to do, mark crops or add in notes. So I'm just going to zoom in on this one. So for example, there is dead space there. I quite like it at the minute. But if you thought, man, I could crop that out, change the colour, go back into your brush, and for example, you could click and hold shift, and then it will draw a straight line for you. But then you could maybe scribble that to signify a crop. Um, you could, if we go back a couple of steps, you could indicate that you want a vignette maybe. Yeah, so you're just marking up and you're just showing your thinking about that image, what you're going to do to it, what crop you're going to amend. Um, so for another example, you could show that whoop, that that is on the third, um, you've got the central horizon point, you could, I don't know, try a completely different crop if you like that, so let's see if we can get a crop out of this one, and then you could get rid of all of this, okay? But while we're working on layer one, none of this is actually affecting your contact sheet until you flatten it, and then save it as a JPEG. So if we zoom back out, once you've marked up your contact sheet, made some notes on it, you could then press Control shift e or Control e or go Layer, Flatten Image, and then go through the saving as normal. So there we go, contact sheets in Photoshop. Uh, hope this was helpful, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye! Thanks for watching my video and if you found it helpful don't forget to press the like and subscribe. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.